Father, I thank you for every listener. I thank you for lovers of the truth. I thank you, Lord God, that you expand your awareness of how you think of what your word says. Help us to understand. Give us open eyes. Open our ears. Let us hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Father, we exalt you. We humble ourselves before you. We come to your feet. We thank you for this day. We thank you for understanding that's going to save us in the end times. We thank you for having things click in us that are so deep in us that we can't unknow it. Father, we want to take in your wisdom and it becomes part of us. So we have eyes to see things where we will not be moved in the things to come, Father. We thank you for this wisdom. We bless it. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm really excited about this. This is what he's showing on this channel is things that the, the church isn't speaking on and they don't seem important to people, but we're all kings and priests. And so as we're all kings and priests, we come to be who we were born to be. It's a process. Sharing the gospel, speaking the truth, sharing God's wisdom, that kind of thing. Having a heart of a priest, a desire for him to sanctify you, right? And the same with being a king, like coming into leadership, coming into blessing, coming into power in him, uh, that he gets the glory so that he may um, have an impact through you, right? So the opposite of that is socialism. So he wants to tie together this holiday of Memorial Day here in the United States and tie it in with the teasing in of the socialism and the proletariat. It's a part of a socialist movement from another time in history, the whole power to the people movement. So it's conditioning the working class to rise up and take power over those that are oppressing them, giving godhood basically to the lower class. And they are then said to be forming something that is better for them, but it becomes socialism. So they're just being toyed with, manipulated into that even happening. And, that, and then they end up in a dictatorship. So he's saying that's what's happening, of course. We know this one world order is coming in this one world government. But he wants us to understand how it happens, and it happens by this proletarian movement. And this, so this proletariat today may be a little bit different than it was in, in different generations, but it's being sold the same thing. And so I want to read you what, it, what we're being sold, and it's a lot of it's coming through this conditioning of the media, but also the holidays that we are participating in, the fact that we're on the calendar exercising what the world exercises as far as the traditional calendar um, that's trouble, he's saying. He's warning us. There's a new calendar, things being added that are coming. There's a soul tie to the calendar. There's something related to worship on the calendar. These dates are, are given very specifically for times of worship to Lucifer. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. In due course, the proletariat, so the working class, what people call now the woke, in due course, the proletariat has caused a proletarian movement a movement seeking a better social order, struggling for more freedom, more justice, more fraternity for all people and believing that this cannot be realized without a reordering of the economic affairs of the world. So here it's saying these oppressed lower class, basically, they can just decide that, oh, well, we can't get anywhere if we don't reorder the economic affairs of the world. If they could have done that, before, then they would have done it. It's just now this, it's a time that it's being sold to them and they're thinking this is coming from them, but it's being proposed and it's being infiltrated and the speakers are coming in and saying these things because they're being made to think this. They're being made to think that they can reorder the economic affairs of the world. So this is a, by the way, this is a, a, a like Masonic document from University of Chicago. It's journals.uchicago.edu. I'll note this below in a link so you can read the whole thing. But you can see the language, the free Masonic language, the over-intellectualized sarcasm about the Bible and about how Christians think and things. It's very demeaning to Christians, of course, because it's supporting this socialist proletarian movement. So it says this movement is worldwide and constitutes the largest single grouping of beings on the planet. So it's calling people beings and not people. 
it says this movement is worldwide, even then, like without the internet. It's different divisions are increasingly in contact with each other. While they differ radically and violently concerning strategy and tactics, yet on the whole, it moves steadily in one direction toward the securing of increased welfare and power for the masses of humanity. And this is why we see Fox News and CNN, Fox News and CNN, Fox, and I'm just giving those two examples, but you see the radical right and the radical left, radical right, radical left, because that moves the direction steadily towards the securing of increased welfare and power for the masses. It's moving everything towards the proletariat rising up and coming to clash and then forcing and forming this new world order. Uh, I underline this because this was really standing out to me. It says this movement draws into its service literature, art, religion, and science. So when we see religion, of course, we see the Pope, we see what the world classifies as religion, and that goes right along with science and literature and art. So it's using all of these things of the humanities. It says, for these, if they are true to themselves, must serve the many and not the few. So in other words, they must all say the same thing. They live and move and have their being only as they pass the barriers of class and nationality and race and become the servants of universal humanities. They live and move and have their being this is from Acts 17. Paul said this about God, that, that we live and move and have our being in him. That's where we live and move and have our being. But they say we have it only as we pass, as we, the proletariat, pass the barriers of class, nationality, race, and become the servants of universal humanity, not the servants of God. And this is why he's had me point out that God uni, that Etruscan God uni, the God of the universe. And we talked about how universe means one world. So this one world humanity, we become servants. So we're slaves to the one world order is what this is saying. It's saying we've got to get the people to think they're the new proletariat, the woke. We have to get them. And, and this is even woke Christians, people that are socialist Christians are falling into the same trap. So it goes on to talk about this movement. So I'll let you look at that. So believe it or not, one of the ways of coming into or bringing whole world populations into the new world order is through worship, through worship. And so the trick is to have people sympathize using sympathies, and then it brings in worship of the dead. So everything that we memorialize in the world is dead. Everything that God memorializes in the Bible is alive. The memorials that he calls us to create are for, number one, the children of Israel who were alive. It was the stones on the ephod. It was the priest's garment. It was unto them. And so they were alive. So this is everything. This is a memorial to life. Okay. Psalms 9.6. On the contrary, is God saying, O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their memorial is perished with them. So the cities and memorials are perished because these memorials are not of him. Why would we remember the dead when the dead are dead? Um, thy name, O Lord, endures forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. His memorial it lives forever. It's alive. So the memorial of God are always for the living. Leviticus, thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Again, memorial unto the Lord on the bread. The bread is life. It's a living memorial. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel again, as the Lord commanded Moses in Exodus. The Lord is his memorial in Hosea, giving a memorial to God. So Acts 10, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your alms are come up for a memorial before God. So the tithes, the and the prayers, the gifts, the giving, the finances are a memorial. They're living. So everyone that gives into the kingdom, they're giving. So interesting. 
though, but you can just read through all the places it says memorial. Even this is just King James. And there are, I think, 31 instances, but there's looking at that, you can really see, well, why would then we create all these memorials in the world when he always had memorials to either his people, Israel, or himself? A lot of these I noticed say fallen, honor the fallen, thank the living. And you just think, okay, um, to honor the dead, where do we hear fallen in the Bible? We, we hear, of course, fallen angels. So why would they use the term fallen when we don't ever say, oh, I'm going to a funeral. My uncle has fallen. Posters like this that say we stand for the flag and we kneel for the fallen. So the Bible says we stand for the gospel. We stand for the faith. And we kneel, every kneel bows to Jesus Christ. Every knee bows to Jesus Christ. But we're hearing this and we're getting this from our tradition. So this is this indoctrination that we're getting to become this proletariat. And that's what he wants us to tie in together is understanding the world rewards us for believing in this. And we don't even have to stand for the flag or kneel for the fallen on these days to be part of this conditioning. We just take the reward that is the holiday. So we take the day off. We take the party or the picnic or whatever it happens to be in wherever, whatever nation you're in, you know what I mean? It's just whatever your holiday is. But when we participate in this, we're doing a lot of different things. And one is we're emotionally being conditioned that we're doing something good, that we're good people because we have taken a moment to shed a tear or had our eyes water for, oh, the people that died for us. And so we feel good about ourselves and then we get to party and then we get a day off work and then we get to go back to work. So this whole reward system is functioning to condition us into, this is where the world doesn't understand that these ones that run the world, just like this article I read about the proletariat, it makes the people think, the small people, it makes them think that they're doing so much good. It's, it's conditioning them into becoming socialist, proletariat, one world order advocates. I see people getting into these news stories and getting all emotionally worked up. If these stories make a person of God go about deliverance and they start to pray and they start to repent for things in our nation and praise God, I mean, that can be very beneficial. And God will always use these things to stir up things. If there's unhealed wounds in the soul, if there's things we're not conscious of, he can bring these things to light as these manipulations are happening. So praise God, there's always a potential benefit in these ridiculous news stories, but they're so emotionally over the top that it, it does something to the mind and the experimental psychologists of the world have known this maybe all the way back to Egypt because these things were done then. And now we have the technology to make it very, very strong. So these types of things are where people can't see the bad side. They just can't see the bad side. And God wants to show us the bad side and the dangerous side. We should be saying, there's no way I'm going to bow my knee to dead the dead that's giving the dead worship. So this is a perfect example here. Uh, here he's just putting in a flag, but say he was bowing in to the statue. If he is, he's calling into idolatry. And there's names on that statue. So it's tricking people into just like the sin of... Balaam that tricked the Israelites into sinning so they would curse themselves. So this is what's being done to the Christians. They're being tricked into the sin of worshiping death and giving their money. Wow, everyone's so worked up in their emotions. Let's go ahead and get them to send us something. And we're going to put images on the news that's showing that we're using their money to rescue people so the scripture reference uh, for this is the deception of the Gibeonites, Joshua 9, the peril of walking by sight. So the situation was these people pretended to be from a far country. And they said, we're weary travelers. We've been on a long journey. They showed these fake worn garments and their food dry and moldy. They made, they made all this up. This was all fake. Their wineskins were old and patched and their sandals were worn and thin. This is why um, people believe People, everyone says, oh, well, why would they make up all these news stories? Why would they go about 
all that trouble to fake shootings and have people extremely emotional on the TV and have these actors interviewed and things like that. Why would they do that? This is why. It's because they know the power of the people of God. And they know that there is, they're taking ground. They're taking their land back. And they don't want you to take their land back because it's going to kill them. So they're going into all this trouble because Antichrist wants to win. Antichrist wants his new world order. We have this example in the Bible of these people that went to great effort to fake all these things. So they didn't just lie. They had evidence. So what else did they do? Just like the news, they played on their egos and their sense of pride. This is where the socialism thing comes in again. They insisted they came from a great distance to show their respect for the power of the God of the Israelites and wanted to be allowed to live as servants of Israel. Caught off guard, Joshua and the leaders of Israel listened to the ruse of the Gibeonites. They let them play on their emotions and they did not seek the counsel of the Lord. So playing on the pride, sometimes a lot of this this fundraising activity is going to so-called Israel, the six-point star, Israel, the Zionist, Israel, the new world order, Israel, the fake Israel. So it's all about, I'm a great person. I care about humanity. That's not going to God, allowing their emotions to be played. So, so many Christians are falling into this trap and they can be leaders. They can be called. They can be anointed. They can be doing the work of the Lord. Christians are going to pay for this. And it's getting very expensive in this time. See, it says three days after they made the treaty with them, the Israelites found out they were from the local area and lived nearby with these news stories and these, these holidays and all the things through emotions. I think this is what the Lord wants us to understand. It's easier to be a good Christian in a socialist way than it is to be in a, a way of faithfulness. It's easier to, for example, have a day off, spend time with family, and go and serve in a food kitchen on a day, like say a food kitchen for veterans or something. It's easier to do that than to stay at home, fast and pray, repent for the nation, asking God for understanding of what these holidays actually really are, who created them, why death is memorialized. It's a lot harder to do that. It's a lot easier for people to think themselves good Christians to be involved in these things of do good for people. That's the proletariat way. That's the proletariat way. That's the woke way. There's just a few that are separating themselves from these deceptions. Even Joshua fell for this. So Joshua summoned Gibeonites and said to them, why did you trick us by saying we live far away from you when you really live nearby? Now you are condemned to perpetual servitude as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. They said to Joshua, because of you, we were terrified we would lose our lives, so we did this thing. Can you just imagine if you watch a news story, you believe it, you take a, a medical solution, three days later, you find out that it was all a lie, and what you would have to then live with. And this is the type of thing that we're dealing with now in, in the land of science is our God, science is our answer. So we can't be smarter than the devil and God wants us to understand that. And this is something that I like to repeat on this channel. This is what the woke community believes. They believe they don't need God. They just need knowledge. That's the God of knowledge of good and evil. We know the word and we do it. That's what we do. So it's not more education about what the devil is doing. So God gives us education about what the devil does, his tactics in his scriptures. Ultimately, it's how... He tells us to spend our lives in the New Testament and how Jesus taught us what he told us to do, how he told us to live, uh, what the word teaches us by Old Testament and New Te Testament revelation, what is the way to live in God's sight. We can't prove what they say they know, just like the people that are saying, well, this is science and this is my laboratory proof and, and all this. It's like, well, we never get to see that evidence for ourselves. We have to believe them because we can't disprove them because we're not in that position where we have all their records and we have cameras on them watching them, what they're doing. We don't have any of that. We're not provided any of that. We're just supposed to believe them. God, he wants us to believe him by that kind of faith. But what they're demanding of uh, you and me is that they're saying, well, you just need to have faith in us. You just need to believe that what we're saying is true. You need to believe our science, even why we are putting up these memorials.
So the more that we're in the word, the more that we go, wait a minute, this isn't right. Why are we seeing fallen on everything? Why is it not just the dead? Is this more about fallen angels? Is this more about worship of death? You know, we're, we're dead and that's it. And so why would we be spending any time calling up their names and thinking of them? That's what worship of ancestors do. That's what other religions do. Pagan religions remember those that are dead. They even have altars to those that are dead. And what these are are altars. So we have this holiday, and these holidays always to me feel very difficult spiritually because you can feel the worship of God being replaced and displaced on these holidays. There's so much worship and attention going to something other than God that even Christians are participating in that it's a really good day for spiritual attack because the devil knows that everybody's off doing something else of the flesh. Everybody's everybody's in the soul, they're in the feelings, they're in the emotions, they're in the traditions, but they're not in the spirit. And so his people, though, his people always stay in the spirit. His people always, so every day is like another. So we look at the New Testament church. They had no part of the system that they were living among. It was just the gospel. And it was this, that same thing every day. So the, that's where we're to be. That's where we're safe. So this is the key, is that we are very vulnerable to this socialist movement, to this proletarian movement, to this social conditioning, the socialism conditioning, this emotional conditioning. The more we turn around the circle of the calendar, the calendar keeps us in a circle. It's a form of conditioning. It's a psychological conditioning that when you repeat things and you do it the same every year, you keep everyone on this rotating disc that never changes and you can't escape it even if you want to kind of a thing unless you're with the Lord. So the Lord gives us escape. I hope this is making sense. And that's why records are repeated uh, even on Christian radio because it makes you feel caged psychologically. It makes you feel limited and it presses you in so you don't have original thoughts. The creativity leaves, you become more and more blended in with everybody else is hearing the same song over and over again. So he wants you to hear the word over and over again. And that's literally the opposite that is the key to your freedom. Anyone that has to break any form of how they thought before, the way to do it isn't by finding out all this information or being more smart or being more woke or being more intellectual or watching more videos, getting gathering more information about what the devil's doing. Those things can be helpful. The only thing that really truly does it is hearing the scriptures, hearing the word by the Holy Spirit, and then doing it so it stays in you to renew our minds. And that's why all of this is functioning to try to get whatever Bible that anyone has in their heart <laughs> to get it out of them and to get them bowing to something else. So this is even putting our crown on this. When you look around on the holidays, look around for these types of things of a portal is what I'm hearing. These portals, this is truly a portal right here. Um, how are they gaining worship through this? Why are they bringing our attention to the dead? Why are they bringing our prayers and tears to the dead? And we know as Christians, it's just we, is how uh, alive is the Bible? How real is the Bible to us? So he had me bring up this Wanamaker diary calendar. He wants us to come off the calendar because all of these calendar things and the news, it's the same thing. He wants us to come off the news. He wants us to come off fully off the TV. He wants us to come off of the, th the whispers and the shouts of the things of the world. They're bringing you into socialism and you're not going to be able to help it because the you can't hear and do the word and then hear and do the gospel of the news. You can't do them both. The news demands your action, just like the word demands your action. And too many Christians are doing both. And they're ending up making a mistake that is going to cost them because they were so emotionally wrapped up in what they thought was true and only later found out it wasn't. But it was too late. And we're moving into a time where one choice to do one thing can take away eternal life and it's irreversible. So come off the calendar. This was an invention. This was something to bring 
people this desk calendar to get into the system. So they start to put the holidays on the calendar. So everybody had the same thing. Everybody made sure everybody knew this is what's going on. This is why the, the banks and the schools and the institutions, all that, they all are in agreement with this is a holiday. So they're all made to be in agreement and there's a reward for it. So there's a reward also for the things that the news tells you to do. Once you hear the news story, if you obey what they tell you to do, there's a reward. If you disobey, there is a punishment. There's a penalty. Satan contradicts, counterfeits everything that God's way is. So God's way is obey God's word. And if you don't, there's a penalty. And he always wants to bring you to um, understanding that the judgment does come, but it gives you time. He gives you time to repent and come back. But the devil's way is much more exacting, much more punitive, much more instant. Jumps on every opportunity to punish uh, those that are created in God's image. So I just thank you, God, for just helping us to understand more and more that we would have eyes to see of this deception that we are being funneled into feeling our way to worshiping the dead and to taking away all of this focus that we're to have on you and doing your word and giving it to these things that the world is dictating because it makes us feel like good Christians. And that's Freemasons and every other religion, and every other faith, every pagan faith. So we repent for that, Lord God. We repent where we thought we were doing good by abiding in these holidays and bowing at these memorials and giving flowers to these memorials and visiting them, Lord God. Uh, we repent for that. We end those traditions. We understand that you get our worship. You get our memorial. You're a living memorial. The memorial is to that which is living. Spending these days that are designated as holidays to dead, when we spend it giving you honor, it's giving life to where the enemy's trying to steal it away. It's giving life and worship to you to where the enemy's trying to steal it away. Father, we can't do both. Father, we repent for giving our eyes and our ears to the news and the things that they, these Gibeonite strategies, these proletarian socialist strategies that they are cooking up because they know we're taking ground, because they know that they have to keep the ground, they have to stay alive, they have to save themselves. And they're magicians, and they come in and they go through a lot of trouble, Lord God, to deceive us. And even the leaders, even the highest called of your people can be deceived. So Father, we repent for being part of taking collections, money collections, or taking, uh, giving collections to these societies and fundraisers and organizations. We repent for giving to these things, Lord God. We don't know where this money is going, Father. We just thank you for this understanding and, and truly coming to a place of godly sorrow and repenting for these things. So we thank you, God, that you bring us to a heartfelt repentance and you have us to continually set ourselves low, shut everything else off, come to a new level of understanding of this witchcraft, that we are believers that do not even speak of things that are on the media because we don't watch it, we don't know about it, we're not interested in it, we want to know your truth. We walk by faith in the word, not by sight of the news, Lord God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. See you in another video. Bye for now.